Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Total Organic Chemistry. This video, we'll be learning about diazonium or diazo compounds. By the end of this video, the questions that you should be able to answer are what are diazo compounds and how do I synthesize them? And in what reactions do diazo compounds act as electrophiles? If you need some review on electrophilic aromatic substitutions, go ahead and click the video at the top of the screen before continuing on with this one. Let's start with the first question, how do we synthesize a diazo compound? Well, we can start with aniline here. Remember, aniline is just our benzene ring with an NH2 group. And we will add in some sodium nitrite, that's NaNO2, and a non-nucleophilic acid like hydrochloric acid. And we'll do this reaction maybe in an ice bath, so at zero degrees Celsius, slowly warming it up to room temperature. And that is going to produce our diazonium salt here. And diazonium, meaning we have this N2 plus substituent on the aromatic ring. And because we have that positive formal charge on the nitrogen, just to keep track of our charges, we can also add in the chloride ion that we had from the hydrochloric acid. I won't go into the mechanism for this, it's a little bit more complicated than we need to know, but the very important thing is that remember that nitrogen gas, N2, is a very stable compound because of that triple bond between the two nitrogens. So what can happen is the bond between the nitrogen and the carbon can break, giving those electrons to the nitrogen, and this will evolve nitrogen gas, so it is a very thermodynamically favored reaction. and it leaves us with a phenyl cation. So we have this benzene ring with a positive formal charge on one of the carbons. Now remember, we still have a fully aromatic ring, so this formal positive charge is not in the delocalized pi system of the benzene ring. So because that positive charge is not delocalized, this is going to be a very unstable intermediate. And if we add in any sort of nucleophile, I can just write Nu minus. That nucleophile will happily attack the phenyl cation and give us a substituted benzene. So this is a very important property of diazonium compounds. For example, if we have our diazonium salt here, the benzene ring with that N2 plus group, And then we have some water in our reaction. That oxygen is fairly nucleophilic on the water molecule, so it's going to replace the N2 and give us phenol as our product. So this is nice because now we have very benign conditions to form phenol, whereas if you take a look at my previous video on other ways to form phenol, other methods might require the use of boiling sodium hydroxide or palladium catalysts. Another very useful reaction starts with the same diazonium salt. And then we treat this with a copper 1 salt. So I can write CuX, where X is commonly a halide like chloride or bromide or iodide, but can also be other counterions like cyanide or even hydroxide. And this will form the substituted benzene ring. So we get that N2 leaving the ring, and we will have the substituted benzene with the X group on that ring. This is known as the Sandmeyer reaction whenever we're using that copper 1 salt. I'll walk you through a simplified mechanism of this as well. First, we start with our diazo salt, and I will draw out explicitly the triple bond to this nitrogen. And I will also draw another X minus here. This is going to be the counter ion to our diazonium salt. Remember that comes from whatever acid we used to synthesize the salt in the first place. I'll just use X to represent this as well, just to simplify the mechanism a little bit. We will also have our copper one salt, so I can draw Cu plus and X minus. And the copper will donate one of its electrons 
to this nitrogen in the diazonium salt. So this is going to be a radical reaction. Remember, we use single-headed arrows for these. Now that copper, remember, because it donated one of its electrons, it will be oxidized to copper 2+. Plus. So we will get one equivalent of CuX2 from this step, that other X coming from the diazonium salt. And we will also get this intermediate from the diazo compound, where that nitrogen now has a neutral formal charge, and it is also a radical. Then we'll have this carbon-nitrogen bond break homolytically. So remember, homolytic cleavage means that we have one electron in the bond going to the nitrogen and one electron going to the carbon of the benzene ring. Now this will accomplish the same thing as in the previous reaction, where we lose one molecule of nitrogen gas. However, instead of making a phenyl cation, where we have a full positive charge on the benzene ring, it actually makes a phenyl radical. So now we have this benzene ring with one electron on one of these carbons and a neutral overall formal charge. Now we take our CuX2 species that we formed earlier, and the copper will donate another one of its electrons to form a bond to that benzene ring. And we will have this radical electron come over to form that bond. That makes this last intermediate here with the copper bonded to the benzene ring. And finally, this will decompose, losing one equivalent of CuX. So that regenerates one equivalent of that CuX that we used in the beginning. And will leave us with the substituted benzene, where X is now bonded to the ring. So this is another quite useful, very mild reaction conditions way to form substituted benzenes with nucleophiles. Another reaction you might find useful is decomposing the diazonium salt. So if we take our main diazonium salt again, and we treat it with hypophosphorous acid, so this is H3PO2, and water. We can actually evolve that nitrogen gas, but instead of adding a nucleophile, we just replace that N2 with a hydrogen, which gives us the benzene ring back again. So this may be useful if you ever need to install a diazonium group and then remove it at a later point in the synthesis. One reaction I finally want to take a look at is called a diazo coupling. These reactions are very useful in the synthesis of dyes especially, so things like food colorings or fabric dyes are often synthesized using this procedure. We can first start with a diazo compound. I'm continuing to use the unsubstituted diazo compound, but you can do this with any number of substituents on the benzene ring as well. And then we're going to add in some sort of substituted benzene ring, and often this is going to be some ring that is highly activated toward electrophilic aromatic substitution. So if you refer to my video at the top of the screen, you'll remember that the most strongly activating groups are nitrogens with a free lone pair, so something like an amine or something like an ether or alcohol where we have an oxygen with a lone pair that can be donated into the ring. So as an example, we could use this compound where we have a nitrogen bonded to the ring and we have two methyl groups on that nitrogen. And we'll add in some acid as a source of H plus ions. And this will give us this coupled product where we have this benzene ring on the left. We still have the two nitrogen atoms, but now they are bonded with a double bond instead of a triple bond between them. And we've coupled that other nitrogen to the other aromatic ring in an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction to give us this highly conjugated product. And highly conjugated molecules like this are often very colorful, which is why they are so commonly used as dyes. I'll leave it up to you to draw out the mechanism for this. This is simply an electrophilic aromatic substitution where our diazonium compound 
is now the electrophile. So I hope this video gave you a good introduction to diazonium compounds and their various uses in synthetic chemistry. If you liked the video, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media, and if you're willing and able, consider donating to my Patreon page, which helps me keep this channel alive and creating content for all of you. Thanks for watching.